Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com and this is just a little one-off tutorial on shortcuts in the Eclipse IDE for Java developers. Um, so I'm just going to show you a few of my favorite shortcuts and some little tips and tricks that you might not know. So I've got a project here and I'm going to give it a main class. I'm just right-clicking and going to New Class, call this App. And if you want to give a class uh, a main method, of course you can tick this box here. But if you don't tick that box, a quick way to do it is click inside your um, class, type main and control space, and then just hit return there. And that will give you a main method. Now you can see that this is badly formatted. And one of my absolute favorite shortcuts is control shift F, F for format. So if I do control shift and F, it formats my code for me. And that can save you huge amounts of time um, because beginners like when we start coding uh, most of us don't format our code well and we can end up staring at things for ages trying to find a bug that would have been obvious if the code had been formatted correctly so control shift f is really useful and if you um, forget the shortcut if you just right click and go to source um, you can see it's here format and there's the shortcut control shift and f Another really useful one that's um, particularly good for debugging is if you type sysout and control space, then it auto-completes this system.out.println, um, which, of course, you can output things in a console with. But even if you're writing a GUI program, if you can put in, you can put in um, these sysouts and um, use them to debug your application a little bit. So if I run this, oh yeah, um, and to, to actually run your application, in fact, um, if you press F11, that will run your application in debug mode. Um, and debug mode might be a little bit slower than normal mode. Um, but apart from that, unless you've set breakpoints, it's basically equivalent to running it in the normal way. And you can find that shortcut under the Run menu here. Um, you can see to run it in uh, normal mode is Control plus F11 and in debug mode, which is usually fine. Just just hit F11. Um, now another extremely extremely useful shortcut is uh, Control Shift I for adding an import. So let's say I've got a variable here of type list. Um, I call it. I just call it list. And I want to add the import for the list interface. I can press Control Shift and did I say I? Sorry, I meant O. Control Shift O, like that. Um, and if there's multiple possibilities, you'll get this coming up, and you have to choose the one you want. So I want Java Util List, and just click Finish, and it adds the import at the top here. And uh, it will even remove imports that you don't need. So let's say I have um, Array List, another, and I add the import for that with Control Shift O. O stands for Organize Imports then it will add array list there and let's say I no longer needed list I'll just comment this out um, if I can remember where the key is on this keyboard here we go um, so if I do control shift O again it will remove the unused import so um, control shift and O it stands for organize imports and uh, don't be afraid to use that there's no need to add imports yourself I don't see any advantage to it just use that shortcut and if you right click here and you go to source, you can see that organize imports is there and it's control shift and O. Um, okay, so um, we've covered sys out. Oh yeah, sys air as well is um, can be quite useful. If you want to put some um, if you want to have some console output that's gonna be printed in red, if you do sys air, you can print to the error output stream. And um, that looks just a little bit different. So I typed sys air and I did control space again, like with sys out. And now if I just run this with F11, you can see that this comes out in red down here to alert you to there being an error. If you want to rename a variable, let's make this a little bit more complex. Um, let's say uh, another here equals new array list. And again, I'll do Control Shift O to add the import. I've already got it, maybe. Um, oh yeah, of course, I already have it. 
But now supposing I decide to rename this variable. Um, if I just right click on it and go to um, refactor and um, I thought it was in there. Actually let me make sure I've selected the variable. Right click, go to refactor, rename at the top here. So I think you have to have it selected. And there is a apparently an Alt Shift R shortcut for this, but I never can remember it. So if you just right click and go to refactor and then rename it, and then you can just type in another name there. So um, let's say sum list, and you see it's automatically renaming all um, all occurrences of the variable. So it's really useful. You can rename a class as well if you right click on the class um, file here in the left hand pane and go to uh, refactor rename so let's change this to main and click next so it's found all the places where um, all the bits that might need refactoring and I'm just going to click finish and you see it changes the name of the class as well as the name of the file so that saves you some um, work um, so oh yeah and another good one um, that's sometimes very useful is find references. So uh, let's say I want to find all the places where I've used this variable. If I right click and go to references and I can choose any of these but let's say workspace so I want to find all the actually let's say project I want to find all the references all the places this variable is used in a project. If I click that then down here after a, after a while searching it will show me all the places where this variable is used. And if you want to go to the place where a variable is declared, so let's click on this and you press F, just press F3 and you see it will jump to the declaration of it. So even if you have some class that's declared in another file, um, that will work. Let me just show you that. So if I go to new class and I call this temp, click finish. And now in main, let's just have a um, variable of type temp, temp, temp. So um, I click on this temp um, variable and actually click on um, the class name here, the type, and press F3. It goes to the place where it's declared. So that's, that's quite useful. Um, and uh, yeah, so um, if you want to, yeah, another really good one actually is removing lines. So if you want to remove some lines, just click in the line and press anywhere in the line and do Control D, like this, and you can remove entire lines in the editor, which I really like. It saves you selecting the thing. It actually saves quite a lot of hassle. And you should be aware, of course, that um, a lot of things in Eclipse will sort of auto-complete um, if you kind of type them right, the right way. So supposing I want um, an array list here, if I just type, you know, I start typing like A and then just press control space and just carry on typing and the case doesn't even matter um, so I'm typing lowercase l but you see it's gone to the place in the list um, that matches what I'm typing um, apart from the case it's ignoring case and I can just hit return then when the top when the right entry is selected and it completes array list for me um, which is great and uh, similarly, let's say you're creating a function. Um, well, this isn't really similar, but it's, it's handy to know. Let's say I, I create a public or a private static, um, I'll just call it func, put the brackets in there, open a bracket. Um, here we go. You don't have to type the closing bracket because when I hit return now, it will just put the closing bracket in, which is very handy. And also with comments, multi line comments, if I type slash um, asterisk here then hit return it's um, auto completing the comment for me so that's quite that's quite handy I should have had a void or something in there actually um, uh, that's that's almost it that's almost all the ones that I know um, except that I can show you now a really quick way to create a so-called bean class. Like supposing you've got a class and you want it to have getters and setters and possibly a custom constructor or two. Um, and then of course you might want to add other methods yourself. You can do that really quickly using Eclipse. So let's right click here and go to new 
class and I'll call this uh, my old standby person and click finish and now I'll give person some private fields like private string name and um, I'll say maybe private int id and so on you could keep adding fields like this you can generate getters and setters automatically by right clicking and going to um, source and generate getters and setters and um, here you can select the fields you want to use to generate your getters and setters which ones you want to generate getters and setters for and of course you can expand if you want and just have getters or just setters or whatever so let's tick these and click OK and I've got my get and set methods and I can format that with the control I showed um, the shortcut I showed you before control shift F like that now often you want to create a specialized constructor for, for your class and you can do that just by right clicking and going to source um, generate constructor using fields and again you can tick the fields that you want to be arguments to your constructor and click OK and hey presto I've got a constructor with the right parameters and it sets the um, instance variables correctly it's got this call to super as well which isn't needed in this case um, so I can delete that just by clicking somewhere in the line and doing control D and I'll do control D to delete some blank lines and finally as far as I can think you may know this already but if you want to override methods in a super class um, then uh, so the super class of person is object and if I just right click here I can go to source um, override implement methods um, and there you can choose methods from the super class to override so let's say I don't know uh, clone I could override the clone class and it, it tries to put in a kind of implementation that just calls the parent implementation so it will just work by default but of course you can then change it to do what you want yourself and I should mention these other things in that menu because if I go to source and there's also some really useful stuff like um, principally um, generate hash code and equals um, because that will literally automatically generate a hash code and an equals method for you using the fields that you specify so you can now compare your objects using dot equals and you can put them in hashes as keys if you want because it's generated a hash code using these fields uh, so that's it. I think that's I think that's all the ones that I use myself. Um, have fun with that, and until next time. Oh yeah, and uh, of course go to caveofprogramming.com if you want to find more tutorials and uh, more stuff like this. And until next time, happy coding.